Good morning. Welcome to Christ the Ark Church. Stay tuned and enjoy the service with us.
20. I'm going to read from verse 32 to 36. Hallelujah. It reads as follows. And now I commit you to God and to the message of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourself know that these hands have provided for my needs and for those who were with me. In every way, I've shown you that by laboring like this, it is necessary to help the weak and to keep in mind the words of the Lord Jesus. For he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Hallelujah. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Hallelujah. When we give in the house of the Lord, we are giving in honor of God's weight. We are giving to praise his holy name. We are giving so that the weak may be strengthened. Hallelujah. So that when the church will be able to continue. Hallelujah. So that the church will be able, hallelujah, to continue its work for the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you give this morning, I want us to personalize our giving. Hallelujah. We were praying and we were fasting. And we know that uh, even when Jesus was done with his praying and fasting, uh, the devil came and tempted him. We are going to give this morning saying, Lord, even if the devil comes and tempts me, may I remember your weight. May I seal it in, the, in my heart. Hallelujah. May I meditate on it. May, may, may I speak the word of God to the defense of the devil and tell the devil that it is written. Hallelujah. Even when we are giving this morning, we can tell the devil that it is written, that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Hallelujah. Can we come and give before the, 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 the throne of grace? Knowing that when we are doing this, we are doing it for the Lord. He is the one that sees the seeds that we plant every Sunday in this house. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let us come and give.
me now <laughs> use my strength where it's necessary. <laughs> I'm going to read the word of God from Joshua 1. I'll start from verse 1. I just want to say this is my special uh, uh, verse. It talks to me. Even when the pastor, when he said, No, this is the theme for the year, this is actually a theme for my whole life. I just want to share a little bit of myself, the reason why I love this place. I lost my parents when I, I think I lost my, my father when I was in primary. Then I lost my mother a week before I write my first tertiary exam. So this verse was the one which was keeping me strong because then it's really so let me read it and it then. It says after the death of Moses, the servant of, of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them. And then, three readers follows. I will give you every place where you, you set your foot. As I promised Moses, My, your territory will be extended from the desert to Lebanon. I will skip to verse 9. He said, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. That's why I'm saying it has been the best for it's, it's the best that is applicable for the days of my life because the Lord is saying here, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So this is the word verse that I stood by it and I have seen God because then I have to tell myself that I have God. I may not have parents, but he is everything to me. He was my father. He was also my mother. He provided where it was necessary. So when the theme say God is with us, I just wanted to read to this to say, I am a testimony that God is with us. God has been there for me. With this verse, God is saying, I am with you. And when God says he is with you, you trust in him. It doesn't matter what you have. You just say, God, all is in you. Which means then you, you walk freely. You let him be the one to provide. That's why when I look back where I come from, I have seen God. That's why I'm saying, I'm a living testimony because of this verse. It has seen me through. I have seen God. That's why when the theme of this year is saying God is with us, it's actually, you know when you are already activated and you are now energized. Because I know I'm moving with this God. I know that in everything that I do, God is with us. So I just wanted, I chose this verse today because I know it means a lot and I want to carry someone to say, Run with this verse. Yeah. God is there for us. And six say, be strong and courageous because you will lead those people to inherit the land I saw to your as to their ancestors to give to them. So I don't know what you want to inherit from your life. It can be a car that you want so much that you think, no, in my family, none has even achieved that far. In my family, nobody has even ever did. In my family, I remember the other time when I was I was still, I used to go at church where you will uh, we will have prayers and then they will say, send us a prayer request, prayer request. I just want to give another testimony. Then I would give test, I would send my prayer request. I remember when I said I want to I want to build a house for my family. Pray with me at church at home. So one of the strongest pastor after the church came to me and said, Oh, you plan to build a family a house? I said, yes. And he said to me, what kind of house you want to build? Then I, he, was a, he was the one who was building the house around our area. So he asked me, he said to me, what kind of a house you want to build? Then I explained to him, this is the type of house I want. And a garage is like a garage. There's no one in your family who has a car. What you want a garage for? Hey. Now look where I am. Hey. Oh, yeah. so yeah. Because of what we see, what yeah. is current, we play knowing that God is able yeah. and God will provide irrespective of what people see today. Yeah. Because that was based on what they were seeing that day at that stage. But look at God. That's why I'm saying this this verse, God has been with us and is still with us. This theme I'm telling you is the theme 
God in my life. I just want us to go and pray and say, at this day when we say, no, Lord, we have seen you. I know all these two weeks we have said things to God to say, God, this is what I want to achieve. This is my vision. This is where I want to see myself. I just want us to go and pray and say, God, with you, everything that we have put in your hands, we will achieve. Let's go and pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus,
we are not alone. Amen. No matter the size of challenges that we may come across, those challenges will not remove God from the equation. God is with us. Amen. God has given us a certain promise. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a promise that no one can change. This is the promise that God is committed to. God says, he will, she will bring forth a son. You, you will be called Emmanuel, which is a greatest declaration of saying the presence of God is with his people. So when we say Emmanuel, God is with us, we are declaring the presence of God with Christ in our church. We are declaring the presence of God with you and with me. We are declaring the presence of God with his people. So family, I want you to know that God is with us. So today we are ministering under a topic that says God is with us part number four. We are going to get our passage of scripture from the book of Philippians chapter 4 is a very popular verse verse number 19 my Bible says in the Mormon Christian standard Bible and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus let's pray for the word Father we thank you for your word it's forever settled in heaven Father your word is alive your word is powerful your word is the lamp to my feet and the light to my path. I pray for a life-changing word experience. Father, as we minister your word and it enters every heart, Father, I pray that your children, faith will rise. Your children walk on water, move mountains, and do the impossible. Father, I will not minister in my limited human abilities, but I will allow the mighty, awesome, powerful Holy Spirit to minister through me this morning. After all is said and done, Lord, you receive all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, family, this is a message from me to you. I'm saying, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Can you say to your neighbor, neighbor, this is my message from me to you. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Hallelujah. This is a message from God to us. Hey, this is a message that God, God sent through Paul. And Paul, when he declares this message to the church in Philip, he says, and my God. Hey, he's talking about a God who he has a personal experience with. He says, and my God. This is a man who is confused about who he is talking about. He says, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Let me tell you, Paul was speaking from the point of experience because he has seen his God supply all his needs according to his riches in glory. So it means no matter what Paul presented before God, God was able to meet that need. That Paul speaks a message to encourage the church of Philippi and say, hey, Christ the church, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. He says, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. He is convinced. And this man knows what he's talking about. He knows that he is not beating around the bush or wasting these people's time. But he said something that he knows that his God is able to do. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. This is a man who has walked with God and he has seen God meet his needs along the way. That he says, with the experience that I have come across, I know that God will be able to do this very same thing for you. Hey, family Paul had to tell the Philippians church because he saw how 
they were prepared to meet, to meet the needs of others. So the Philippians church did not only meet the needs of Paul, but they were always ready to meet the needs of other people also. Hey, they made sure that he does not struggle in fulfilling his mandate here on earth. So in conclusion of telling them about what I see you doing. So he was telling them first about what he sees them doing. Then when he concludes that by wrapping up their lifestyle, he says, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. It started when the Philippians church demonstrated that they were ready to meet the needs of others. And when they were able to meet the needs of others, Paul was just saying that the very same thing that makes you to want to meet the needs of others, it is the very same thing that my God will be able to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Let me tell you, the Philippians church was not able to meet all the needs of others. No, with what they were able to, they were able to meet the needs of others. Now God says, because you are able to meet the needs of others, you are not able to meet all the needs. And my God, then will meet, supply all your needs according to his riches in God. My God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. You know, supplying all our needs according to his riches in glory, it means that God supplying all our needs according to his limitless supply. Right? So he's saying according to his riches in glory, that is an area that does not run out of resources. He says he will supply all your needs according to his unlimited supply. Amen. Limitless supply. This is never ending supply. My God is able to meet all your needs more than you can even think or even imagine. Amen. God, his God is a supply of all human needs. That's why he's confidently saying, my God will supply all your needs. So it means that his God is the supplier of human needs. Hallelujah. Amen. God is the supplier of all human needs. Your needs are things that you cannot live without. Because in economics, they teach us about what needs and wants. So they say what wants are what are things that you can do without. But needs are things that you cannot do without. So God is the supplier of all human needs. God is the supplier of all the things that humans cannot do without. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. God is the supplier of all the things that human beings cannot do without. So these are the things that you need in order to survive. These are the needs. It's things that you need in order to do what? To survive. When your needs are not met, you are going to struggle to survive. So he said, my God will supply everything that you need in order to survive. According to what? To his unlimited supply. According to his limitless resources. My God will supply so that you can be able to survive. Paul says God is able to supply those basic necessities. Hallelujah. Amen. God is able to meet all those needs. God is able to meet all those needs. So Paul says, my God will supply. So when he says my God will supply, he is saying that God is a supplier. Hallelujah. As far as I know, for every business to succeed, that business needs a consistent supplier. If you are selling, you are saying, I'm selling this particular product, you must have a reliable supplier. So for us to be able to survive, we need a reliable supply. Paul says his God is our supplier so that we can be 
made known to survive. A supplier is a person who provides something that is needed. Huh? So, a supplier gives you something that you need. You cannot wake up tomorrow and say, I'm going to sell bread, but you don't have the supply of bread. You cannot say, I sell fish, you don't have a supply of fish. You need a supplier in order for your business to be sustainable. So you need a supplier in order for your life to be sustainable. Then Paul says, your God is your supplier. Hey, can I see anyone here who is sleeping with all the supply? I'm asking this question in the wrong place. <laughs> can I see someone who says, I have a supply? So there is someone who has not lifted their hands. Amen. Maybe they are lifting it on the phone. Amen. Because when you are in a team's meeting, they say, please lift up your hands to show that you agree or disagree. <laughs> so women, we have a supply Amen. to provide us with the products and services that we need in order to survive. Yeah. So every man needs a supply. <laughs> Family, anyone who does not need the supplier I'm talking about, it is a person who is saying, I'm going to struggle with stock. Amen. Let me tell you, your life is made up of different shapes. One that is different types of products and services. But you cannot be able to provide those products and services without the supplier. Yeah. You want the job. You need the supplier of jobs. You want healing. You need the supplier of healing. You, whatever you want, there is a supplier. This supplier, Paul is introducing him to us. He says we need God in order to survive. As much as every business needs a reliable sub supplier to survive, we need God in order to survive. Amen. I want you when you go to your workplace, tell them, you need God in order to survive. Amen. Wherever you go, just say, you need God in order to survive. God is our supply. Amen. Yeah. To supply. Another synonym it is to give. You know what is to give? It is to transfer possession of something. Mm -hmm. You see everything that God gives you, he transfers possession of that particular thing. So that you can be able to use that thing. And you can sustain your life. To, to supply it is to contribute. To contribute it is to give something in order to help to achieve something. Eh? So God gives us things in order to do what? To achieve things. God provides us with things so that we can be able to do what? To achieve things. So God wants to contribute in your life. To supply is to provide. To provide, it is to make something available for you. You see, whatever that God gives you, God gives you that thing in order to use it. <laughs> you know that song that says, That is God. He gives you so that you can do something. He gives you so that you can use. He gave me a voice so that I can preach. He gave me a voice so that I can sing. He gave me so that I can use. He gives you to use. He dispenses things. You know what is to dispense? It is to distribute to a number of people. I remember when there were 5,000 men without counting women and children. They were following Jesus. Jesus looked at them with compassion. He saw that these people look hungry. He looked at his disciples and said, do you have something that we can give them? The disciples said, ah, there's nothing. And then Philip said, Jesus said to Philip, Philip, go and buy something so that we can give these people something. And then Philip said, what did he say? He said, Lord, even if we had, we could not buy enough to be able to feed this people. So, family, I want you to know that he distributed to as many as people so 
that we can know who he is in our lives. Yeah. He distributes, he provides, he supplies so that we can know that God is our supplier. He supplies your protection. Amen. He supplies your healing. Yeah. He supplies your provision. Yeah. He supplies all your needs. Yeah. He distributes to a number of people. So remember, without a supply, we cannot be able to do what we are supposed to do. Without a supplier, you cannot be able to do what you have come to do in this world. So we need a supplier to be able to do what we have come to do in this world. I remember all my life, I was struggling because I did not know that I have a supplier who must give me something that I must use to do what I have come to do in this world. I have struggled for so many years. I was only born again at the age of 29. So 29 years, I was struggling. I did not have a supply. But until year number 29, in April 2009, the supplier came and introduced himself to me. And he said, I will supply all your needs according to my riches in clothes. Until today, I am still enjoying his unlimited supply. I am still enjoying his limitless resources.
Those are the basic, basic foundation of needs. Once those needs are met, you will be able to do what you are supposed to do. But he goes so that we can know how to put things in different orders. He says, after those needs have been met, you have a need for safety and security. You see? So you need protection. You need good health. You need a job. You need property. You need what? Social, social ability. So you see, your needs are changing from the most basic to another level. Because once your basic needs are met, there is another level of needs that must be met. Level number three of needs, he says, love and belonging. You see, after you have good health, you need to be loved and you need to belong. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You need friendship. You need the family. You need the sense of connection. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to be connected with some people. Another level of needs is self-esteem. You see, there's once you, are, you have clothes, you need safety. After you have safety, you need what? You need connection. After you have connection, what do you need? You need self-esteem. <laughs> that is why you have to be confident. Let me tell you, most of the people nowadays who are not confident, when you go to an interview, you go to an interview with a child who has never done the job, but because of their confidence. Yeah. And you have been doing the job for 50 years, but you don't have confidence. You know when that child go to an interview, they present themselves better than the person who has been working 50 years. When they give a person a job, they give a person a job to a, a job to a person who has confidence. <laughs> so that is another need. You need confidence. You need to achieve things. That is self-esteem. Achievement. Amen. You cannot end where everyone else has not even attempted. Hallelujah. That is achievement. You cannot end where everyone has not even attempted. You need to end where there has never been any attempt. That is achievement. Hallelujah. You need to do things that no one in your family has ever done. You know I was laughing. Uh, but you know with joy when Mrs. Kumalo was sharing a testimony that she sent a prayer request that she wants to build a house then someone asked her what type of house do you want to build? she said I also want a garage she did not even have a car, that, a car but she wanted what? something that no one has ever attempted Amen. before yeah. now people who has not yet who do not have that much of confidence they will say why do you want this thing? when no one has ever had it in your family. Yeah. <laughs> so family, we need to do what? To achieve things that no one has ever achieved in our lives. Yeah. We need to fulfill our assignments. That is self-esteem. Self-esteem is the respect for yourself and respect for others. That is self-esteem. Hallelujah. Yeah. Self-esteem is uniqueness. You see, the fingerprints thing. You are unique. Hallelujah. Yeah. So when you, you measure yourself, don't measure yourself against someone else. Measure yourself against yourself. Because you are unique. Hallelujah. You are not like anyone in your family. So you are not even like your parents who gave birth to you. So don't measure yourself against them. Measure yourself against yourself. Because no one, even in your family, has the fingerprints. That you have. You know, in the people that has ever been since creation, no one has a set, a set of fingerprints like your fingerprints. Amen. So you are unique. Hallelujah. Amen. So you know, most of people, they are frustrated, they are living confused life because they are living their life on the wall, looking at what their neighbor is doing. So remember, you can never be like your neighbor. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you are yourself. So be yourself. The highest level of hierarchy of needs on the Maslow's hierarchy is self-actualization. That is morality and creativity. Hallelujah. You know a creative person 
It's a person who starts things that no one has ever started before. Yeah? Look, we are doing the same things, but there are there's differences in those things that are that are being done. You know what is it that does that? It is creative. We need to be creative. Hallelujah. Self-actualization also means what? Acceptance. We need to be accepted. No one wants to be rejected. Self-actualization also means knowing your purpose. I think Maslow was a religious man. He says you also need to discover your purpose. You know people who live frustrated and confused by is people who don't know yet what they've come to do. But I've got something that you can use before you realize what you've come to do. Do what is common for all the believers. If it is serving, just say. If it is giving, just give. If it is playing, just play. If it is singing, just sing. If it is praying, just pray. Do what other com- what is common for all believers. Then you will eventually discover your purpose. That is self actualization. The last one I will share is inner potential. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know how much is locked up inside you? <laughs> that is, you know, the only way that you can know what is locked inside you, it is when you start to attempt things in your life. Amen. If you don't attempt things, you will never realize what you are capable of doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need to also realize our inner potential. So for me, God is able to supply all our needs. So God is able to supply all your needs. Hallelujah. Amen. Even these needs, God is able to meet them. Hallelujah. Amen. God is able to meet all these needs. He can meet all these needs. He is a supplier who never runs out of stock. According to his riches in glory, he is a supplier who never runs out of stock. I remember during COVID, if you loved oven baked chips, there was a time when there were no more oven baked chips in stores. You know why? Because the suppliers have run out of stock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there are things that were even running out. Why? Because suppliers were running out of stock. Now I'm telling you about a supplier who never runs out of stock. Amen. That is my God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is our supplier and God is with us to supply all our needs. I have prayed that may God supply all your needs in 2024. Amen. Every need that you may ever have, no matter how small or how big it may be, may God supply all your needs in 2024. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23, verse number 18, if you do, you will have hope for the future. Your wishes will come true. Hallelujah. That's why I'm saying, man, God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. So if you do, what does it mean if you do? The preceding verse says, do not envy sinners. So, but you must do what? You must reverence and worship God. So the Bible is saying that do not run after the things that people who are living godless lives without hope for salvation are running after. But instead, you fear God, reverence God, worship God. If you do, verse number 18, if you do, the Bible says you will have hope for the future. And your your wishes will come true. Hallelujah. Your wish, it is a wish for your needs to be met. God will meet your needs. Hallelujah. All these past two weeks we have been making wishes to God. And all that is awaiting, it is for those wishes to be made. So the Bible says, your wishes will come true. So God will meet your needs. Do not be intimidated by those who do not believe that Jesus says lies. Those who are living godless lives. So God is inviting us to live godly lives. But my dictionary has generated a new way. It says he is interested in those who live godful lives. Because those who live godless 
lives don't have hope for salvation. But those who live Godful lives, they have hope for salvation. So now, when you have hope for salvation, your wishes will come true. Hallelujah. So we need to live godly lives. Believe that Jesus saves lives. So we need to reverence and worship God. And our wishes will come true. God will supply all our needs. So we have hope for the future, including 2024. 2024, we are saying that may our wishes come true in 2024. Hallelujah. Amen. So your wishes will come true in 2024. God will fulfill your dreams. You know the word fulfill is made up of two words. The word full and the word fill. So the Lord will fulfill our dreams in 2024. You are destined for great things. Your wishes will come true in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Brethren, with that said, while they are preparing Holy Communion, can we please close our eyes and focus on the cross of Jesus? Heavenly loving Father, we want to thank you this morning because you are revealing yourself to us as God, our supplier. Father, you want to give to us, you want to contribute to us, you want to distribute to us, Father, to as many as you can so that we can lose what you have given us. Father, we will go around in 2024. Father, placing our fingerprints in every scene where good things are happening. Father, you will find our fingerprints everywhere where the sick were, everywhere where there was a blind person who has now become able to see, you will find our fingerprints. Where you, there was a person who was sick and now they are healed, you will find our fingerprints. Father, we are praying that everywhere where there was a loss of hope, you will see hope restored because our fingerprints will be there. In 2024, Father, we are praying that you will supply all our needs according to your unlimited supply. Father, I pray that supply so that we can be able to survive in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that we will keep on reverencing and worshiping you. Father, your word says we will have hope for the future. Yes, indeed, we have hope for 2024. Father, and our wishes will come true in 2024 in the mighty name of Jesus. It does not matter the size of wish we may have. Whether it is small or it is big, Father, you will be able to fulfill our dreams in 2024 in the name of Jesus. Lord, I am praying, Father, a blessing over your church as we are going to embark on our Holy Communion. Father, you will make your face to shine upon your church and Father, you will give us peace. Father, you will look upon us with favor, be gracious to us. Father, I am praying that your children will live in the love of God and joy through freedom in Jesus Christ. Lord, they are empowered by the Holy Spirit to fulfill their God-given assignments. Father, I am praying because I know that God is with us. In my mind, we declare the presence of God with this people. Father, we want to thank you because you are with us to supply so that we can be able to survive in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for our prayers. Amen. Amen. Let's do the anointing service and then we will go to Holy Communion when she comes back. Is that okay for me? Apologies for that. So, the anointing service for 2024 is inspired by Acts chapter 10, verse number 8. The Bible says, And how God anointed, and you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Why? And God was with him. So Jesus was anointed with what? With the Holy Spirit and with power. And what did he do? He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Why? Because God was with him. How was God with him? Through the anointing. Hallelujah. So that anointing, it is a sign of the presence of God upon a believer.
believer's life. That's why even the same uh, Paul, uh, Peter, after he preached the first message under the Holy Spirit, they asked him, what must we do to be, to be set to have eternal life? He said, you must believe. And when you believe, then there will be remission of sins, and then you will do what? You will receive a gift of the Holy Spirit. And this gift will be for you, your children, and those who are far away. Everyone who will believe. Now, the gift of the Holy Spirit is signified by this oil. So this oil, when we are, uh, minister it this morning, this oil means God is with us. Now, when God was with Jesus, the Bible says Jesus did what? He went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed. So in 2024, through this anointing, we are saying we will go about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. Hallelujah. So this anointing means going to do good in 2024. It means healing all who are oppressed by the devil. Hallelujah. So, uh, can I please have the oil? So you can just come with your family. I will start with the tomorrow family. And then I will go to Abel's family and then as we go. So the aim of this oil, this is simple oil that we bought from Checkers. So this oil has been blessed. It is now the anointing oil, which signifies what? The presence of the Holy Spirit upon our lives. So when we are this way, we are saying we will go about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just going to say this anointing, it is to go about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. We are going about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. Amen. By this anointing, we are saying we are going about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. Go about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. The Bible says, for God was with him. So God is with us. We go about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. We go about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. We go about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. Amen. We go about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. So, family, by this anointing, we are saying God is with us. So, when we say through 2023, we must know that we are not. Hello, hallelujah. So I think we can maybe sing a few songs while she comes, and then we can have Holy Communion together. But there was no plan to stay this long longer than this. So it's just that there is this most important thing that we have to have in order to do what we are supposed to do. So God is our supplier. So now we need supply of the body of Jesus Christ. So we have already been started for Holy Communion. So Jesus supplied this body. He says when we eat that body, we are doing it in remembrance of him. He supplied his own blood. He says that is what it is a sign of a new covenant. Hallelujah. So he supplied his body, he supplied his blood. Now I want you to know that when we eat that body, we are made whole. When we drink that blood, we are victorious. Why I'm so confident? Because Jesus demonstrated victory when he went to the cross to die for what? For all our sins. Hallelujah. So his blood was shed to do what? To buy away all our sins. Then the Bible says in Revelation, Revelation chapter 12, it says that war ensued in heaven. Between Michael and his angels and the devil and his demons. But the devil and his demons, they were not meant for Michael. 
Because those that overcame, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the truth that we speak. So it means the blood of Jesus gives us victory. Hallelujah. So we will be singing the song that says, Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of
Lord, we thank you for supplying your body, supplying your blood. We thank you for supplying the Holy Spirit who is upon us. We go about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil in 2024. In the mighty name of Jesus, because God is with us. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, we may go about doing good in 2024. And may God fulfill your dreams in 2024.